In this video, I'm giving you 10 amazing ideas for shrub combinations to go around your home. Before we get started and I go out there and show you all these amazing shrubs, I wanted to first take a minute and show you a basic layout that you could do around your house. First of all, you need to make sure your beds are big and wide enough. So from the distance from here to here needs to be six to eight feet. A lot of people make the mistake of not making your beds wide enough and so you don't have room to fit what I call a stagger pattern. And a stagger pattern is just this. So let's say most of the shrubs we're gonna talk about today is gonna to be in that three to four foot range. So you wanna space a minimum of four feet apart. So let's say you have your taller shrubs in the back and we wanna come at least two feet off the house, two feet off your foundation. And the distance between here and here needs to be at least four feet so that we have the right spacing. Unless you want them to grow together like a hedge, you want to at least go four feet. And then in the spaces between these shrubs is where you're going to put your smaller growing shrubs. And the space between here and here needs to be four feet as well. Now we call this a staggered pattern or a zigzag pattern. And that way you have a layered look and the shrubs in the front do not block the shrubs in the back. A couple other things to mention is if you want a third layer, let's say in the spaces down here, you want another, maybe something smaller growing like a grass or maybe something lower growing like a juniper. You wanna make sure that this distance is more like 10 to 12 feet. And when you're making your beds, that seems so huge, but when you fill it up with plants, it actually shrinks it down a lot more. The other thing I wanna mention is if you come out here to this area and make your beds come out here past the house a little more, then you might wanna put a nice little specimen so you could leave room. Oh gosh, I always struggled drawing Christmas trees in school. Hey, that's not too bad. So <laughs> this is your specimen. You could have one on this side too, but just keep that in mind when you're making your beds. So the first combination I have for you is Cerise Charm Loripetalum and Fire Chief Arborvitae. I love this combination so much. It's actually what I used in front of my house. I love Fire Chief because it's evergreen. It grows about three foot tall, three foot wide. This is the improved version from the old school plant known as Rheingold. And what's improved about it is, is it stays more compact and it doesn't split. Sometimes when you have inclement weather, these type of shrubs may split and look weird. This one does not. It also turns a nice reddish burnt color in the winter time and I think it looks gorgeous. And the, the leaf texture and color really contrast Cerise Charm Laura Petalum. A lot of people are scared of Laura Petalums because they think they get way too large. Well, this one's compact. Cerise Charm is gonna stay about three foot tall, three foot wide. You may do some occasional pruning to keep it there, but my, my, it's gorgeous. It blooms bright pink in the spring and keeps a dark, almost black foliage year round. Wanted to flash up here to my house real quick. Here is my Cerise Charm Laura Petalum with the Fire Chief Arborvitae. Again, I've got the stagger pattern look. The distance between here and here is about four feet, and the distance between here and here is four feet, and I came out big enough so I could fit this lovely little specimen umbrella pine right here in the back. The next combination I have for you is Obsession Nandina and Danica Arborvitae. Now, I would probably keep the Danica Arborvitae more up front and the Obsession Nandina in the back, four feet apart again. I love Obsession Nandina because it is an improved Nandina. Southern Living came out with this one. Now, the difference is more compact, less leggy, stays in that three to four foot range, and still you get that beautiful feathery texture that turns cherry red in the winter when it, gets, when it cools off. And it just contrasts this Danica Arborvitae so well. Look at the two different textures and colors there. Danica is also very, very low maintenance. It's similar to the one called Het's Midget. This one's kind of replaced it. It has a lower growing mounding habit, only ever getting about two to three foot tall and wide, probably more like three foot tall and wide down the road. But I just love it. 
stays solid green, holds its color through the winter. These plants here are gonna do really great in part to full sun. This is one of my favorite combinations, especially if you have a very petite garden. Maybe you can't get your beds six to eight feet wide or deep rather. Maybe they're just four feet deep. Well, this is a really, really great petite combination. You have Blue Star Juniper right here and you have Anna's Magic Ball Arborvitae right here. This is relatively new. Let me tell you about Anna's Magic Ball. It only ever gets about a foot, foot and a half tall. It was developed in Canada. So you can know it takes the brutal cold. It's actually quite shade tolerant, but it can take full sun. It keeps a year round gold color loves you know the typical texture of arborvitae nice and soft spherical and it really contrasts the look of this blue star juniper which is not a ground cover juniper by the way it's more of a shrub type juniper it gets about a foot tall couple feet wide year round blue color look at this texture this juniper is also very very soft as well and the two of these together is just a knockout combination i can't hardly show you this colorful combination without smiling this is jazz hands variegated laura petalum and this is sunshine ligustrum both are evergreen yes these are going to kind of get bigger than the other ones i've showed you so you need the appropriate beds but if you have the space this is a great combination jazz hands variegated laura petalum has very white and pink new growth and it contrasts the darker foliage which is the older growth down here more of a, a darker purple color whereas the sunshine ligustrum is just cheery and bright it's going to be more like four to five foot this one four foot so you want to keep the sunshine in the back the jazz hands lower pedal in the front and what other combination is going to be that colorful you're going to absolutely love this combination who could not this is golden globe arborvitae with a southern favorite jubilation gardenia you have the bright gold foliage of the golden globe and the dark glossy foliage and a different textured leaf of the jubilation gardenia these contrast and look so well together let's talk about golden globe it's the one i would keep in the back it's going to probably get in that three to four foot range it keeps a nice rounded shape you don't have to prune it it actually thrives in our southern humidity if you're in the south but it'll thrive about anywhere honestly it resists burn from the sun so it can be out in full sun does great jubilation gardenia however is a re-blooming gardenia we're in the month of october and you can see i've got some fragrant double blooms creamy white this thing looks amazing it also doesn't get leggy does it have crazy offshoots it stays nice and compact and it's also going to get about three foot to four foot tall we all the combinations you show are for sun well not this one if you got a shaded yard you're going to love this this is what i did on the north side of my house where i hardly get any sun at all now these can take more sun but they can also take shade this is mountain fire pieris and this is banana peel elysium or anise now let's talk about the banana peel first this is what i would put out in the front doing that layered look this has got a fragrant waxy year-round gold foliage this is kind of the improved version from florida sunshine in my opinion florida sunshine would have these sporadic offshoots that you'd have to prune off this one keeps that under control and intact this is mountain fire pierce and even though it's smaller right now this will get up to about four feet i love this one slow growing dark green evergreen foliage but look at the new growth the new growth is actually red it also has these beautiful bell-shaped blooms that come off that are white and it and they start blooming about the same time as you're getting a lot of new growth in the early spring and that white and red combination is truly outstanding these contrast each other so well beautiful evergreen combination here we are again on the north side of my house as you can see it's very shady and all these shrubs can take sun they can take shade too i have the elysium up front the pieris in the back and i got these spaced about four foot on center four foot on center and i have this combination going all the way down through there and as you can see i do have that third layer with this sedge grass called evergold it is an evergreen but it stays nice and compact it doesn't spread like monkey grass and i think this texture with this and this and this they just look great together i love this combination right here
<laughs> it's a little wet this morning. This is Mr. Bowling Ball Arborvitae. It only gets about 18 inches to 30 inches tall, somewhere in that range. It has a nice mounded, um, spherical look to it. Blue green soft foliage holds its color very well through the winter. And I've got it paired with Royalty Encore Azalea. Royalty is a purple bloom. And Encore Azaleas are actually re-blooming re azaleas. That's why you see them blooming here in the fall time. This type of azalea can take more sun. It's also gonna be less leggy than like your old fashioned azalea and it's evergreen. So this evergreen combination is sure to give your home year round color. The textures on these shrubs are polar opposites and I think it looks absolutely beautiful. This is Cryptomeria globosa nana, nana being dwarf, so make sure you get the dwarf version. And then this is Flirt Nandina. This is currently, at the time of this video, the most compact Nandina on the market. Flirt only gets about two foot tall and two foot wide, so it's definitely gonna go up in the front. Cryptomeria globosa is more of a three foot by three foot, eventually maybe four foot by four foot, but it's very slow growing. I also love the fun little frilly texture. Reach through the camera, reach through your TV or phone and feel that. That is beautiful, nice and soft and you never need to prune this shrub. It actually just grows in that globe shape. This hasn't been pruned at all. The Flirt Nandina is kind of like a typical Nandina where it is gonna turn red with the cooler weather. This one's got the feathery texture, similar to the Obsession I showed you, but stays a lot smaller. This combination is absolutely gorgeous. Up next, I'm gonna give you a three-piece combo. We got the Blue Star Juniper in the front, which we talked about earlier, but we have a new Laura Petalum. This one's called Jazz Hands Mini. It only gets about a foot tall, three foot wide, year-round purple foliage. And yes, you still get the neon pink blooms like you would get and with a normal Laura Petalum in the springtime. So I like this one kind of slightly behind the Blue Star. And then back here, we have candy corn spirea. Don't you just love that pineapple foliage? Now this one is deciduous. It's going to lose its leaves and I know a lot of you cringe when I say, oh it's not evergreen, but listen, you're only going to go without leaves about two months of the year because in early February or a late February rather, you're going to have cherry red new growth pop out on this thing and it's just going to look really really great with these shrubs and then later on you're going to get that golden and red foliage and then in the spring you're actually going to get purple deep dark purple blooms pop out of this thing for an eye popping combination this is my last combination and i've got some blooms for you this is Puckster Blue Butterfly Bush. I hold this one near and dear to my heart. Why? Because a normal butterfly bush just gets way too big to be putting around your house. Puckster is nice and petite. Only ever gets about two foot tall and wide. Can you believe that? And yes, you're still gonna get these stunning, vibrant blue blooms all through the summer into fall. Would you check that out? absolutely gorgeous. I see beautiful monarch but butterflies hovering around these all the time. You know what's going to contrast it super, super well? Lemon Lime Nandina. Lemon Lime Nandina is a three to four foot tall Nandina. It doesn't turn red. It just stays lime green year round. Of course, it's an evergreen. And look at the texture difference in color combinations of those. But I love Puckster so much. In case you don't like the Lemon Lime Nandina, I'm going to show you three other shrubs that could go with this. If you didn't like the Lemon Lime Nandina, here is Heaven Scent Gardenia. I love Heaven Scent because it's got that glossy green foliage. It stays compact, doesn't get out of control and huge, and it's a re-blooming gardenia. It's a single bloom, not a double bloom like the Jubilation, but it's still absolutely gorgeous and fragrant. And I think this one might stay a little bit smaller than Jubilation from just what it looks like, but it definitely contrast and pairs well with that butterfly bush. And then you would have a blooming combination together. And before I forget, people are gonna ask if Puckster is evergreen. Well, butterfly bushes do pretty much retain their leaves through the winter. They don't look their best, but yes, there will be something there. I wanted to show you these two shrubs with it that we've already talked about. These could go behind it. I would choose one or the other because these probably don't look good together, but 
Fire Chief Arbor Vitae's, again, has got that burnt orange kind of golden foliage. And I think the texture and the shape of this plant really contrasts and looks well with the butterfly bush. So you could use that if you like this butterfly bush, or you could use the golden globe. It's gonna be the same way. Same could be said, nice gold, uh, round foliage, spherical shaped, a different texture and color then the butterfly bush and i think these two together are just absolutely gorgeous and would stand out in your landscape and make neighbors that are driving by veer off the road but not get hurt not ruin their car but just be shocked by your landscape well folks i hope this video gave you some ideas and inspiration about some shrub combinations that you could put around your home please let us know down in the comment section which combination was your favorite we would really love to know and if you liked this video and want to see more of them make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell that way you get updated every time we release a new video and until next time become a plant person